This is an original Microsoft Surface RT, and this is a copy of Windows 10. Specifically, it is an insider build of Windows 10 from 2017 that was compiled for ARM-based devices. And it was never meant to be installed on the Surface RT, but since it's technically compatible with it, people have figured out how to do it. So that's exactly what we're going to be doing today. Sponsored by Linode, cloud computing from Akamai. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another video. So I got to say right off the bat that I honestly don't think this installation process is going to be that difficult. I may regret saying that later on, as longtime viewers will know the absurd amount of problems we seem to run into whenever we do things like this on this channel. But someone out there has actually compiled an automated tool specifically for putting this build of Windows 10 on ARM based devices. It's called the Windows Media Builder, and the Windows Windows 10 variant of it is compatible with a handful of tablets, the Surface RT being included. So all you need is a Windows-based computer to run this tool on, and a USB flash drive that's at least 8 gigabytes in size to copy the necessary files onto, which I haven't done yet. I know what I said in the intro, there's actually nothing on this USB drive, so we're going to be putting some stuff on it momentarily here. Now a bit more about this build of Windows 10. It's pretty old, like almost seven years old. This is a pre-release build of the creator's update from February of 2017, so it's long out of support by now. But according to BetaWiki, it is currently the only available client build of Windows 10 for ARM32. So I certainly wouldn't go into this thinking that you're going to be able to make a Surface RT into a daily use device. This is more of just a fun experiment to try, and that's exactly what we're going to be doing. So let's go ahead and swap over to my Windows 10 computer, and we'll see how difficult or, well, hopefully how easy this process is. All right, so here we are on the Windows Media Builder download page. Uh, there is a version for RT 8.1 as well, but you're going to want to make sure you get the Windows 10 build 15035 version. If you scroll down here, you've got a list of supported devices, of course, the Surface RT being one of them. And down here is the actual download link. Uh, both of these are hosted on archive.org. Uh, the Windows 10 one is just under three gigabytes in size, and I've already got it downloaded and extracted right here. So we're going to double click on build.cmd to begin. And the smart screen is of course gonna come up and yell at us. We're gonna click run anyway. And we have to run it as administrator. That's right, let me do that really quickly here. All right, that looks a lot better. So the first thing it asks you to do is select your device. So luckily there is a preset for the Surface RT. So we're gonna select option one and hit enter. And then it comes up with some device notes here, and it says that the Surface RT requires golden keys to be removed from the device in order to install Windows 10 build 15035 from USB via its original setup slash recovery environment. Now what's interesting is that might not necessarily be the case. I have gotten some conflicting information about this when I was looking into this before I started filming this video. The golden keys jailbreak, just in a nutshell here, essentially allows you to execute non-Microsoft boot manager applications like Grub, for example. So if you wanted to install Linux on the Service RT, you would have to apply the Golden Keys jailbreak. But that may not necessarily be the case for the Windows 10 build that it mentions here from its original setup environment, because I have seen some people do that on video without applying this jailbreak whatsoever. And in fact, the text guide that I found that I referred to before filming this video also makes no mention of it whatsoever. So we're just going to uh, select Y here or type Y, but that's not the last time you'll hear golden keys mentioned in the media builder here. So the next thing it'll do is uh, ask you how you want to sort of configure your Windows 10 installation so we're going to select yes we want to install an app pack and you've got three options here minimal standard and complete so if you want to go bare bones you can go with minimal here to save some space we're going to go with standard you can see that complete gives you like all the windows 10 default applications we don't need like 3d builder and you know some of the other things in here so we're just going to select standard it gives you the option to uninstall bitlocker i'm going to say yes because i don't need bitlocker i don't need cortana either so we'll remove that and we'll keep windows defense so I'm going to say no. And just like Windows RT 8 and 8.1, we can get the Office 2013 RT suite on here. So we're going to say yes, we definitely want to grab that. 
Default Office language is English. No, we don't want to select another language. And we've got some update options for Office. We're going to select three to get SP1 and post SP1 updates to September 2023. And here's where the golden keys become relevant again. So if you went with option four, you could uh, create the installation media using a modified RT 8.1 recovery environment, which will apply the golden keys jailbreak. But we're going to try option one, which is just the standard Windows 10 setup environment, uh, because the guy that I'm following says to do that. And I've seen other people do this without doing anything else to their service RT. But if we run into problems, uh, I'm going to try to come back here and go through option four and uh, we'll see if that, you know, improves things for us. But we'll select option one for now and we'll select one to use the uh, Windows imaging format. And now it's gonna give you a summary of what it's going to do and all the options that you've selected. We're going to select yes. And now it's going to begin downloading the Windows 10 build itself, which will take a little while, so we'll let it do its thing. All right, so it just finished up. It took about an hour to go through all of its automated processes there after it downloaded the ISO itself. And that's to be expected. It did say it was gonna take a while, so it definitely took a while because it has to go through and install packages, remove packages, install drivers. And now it asks you if you want to create USB installation media, we're going to say, yes, we do. The USB drive I have plugged into here is showing up as drive letter K, which there it is. So we'll do K and we will say yes. Now it's going to format it. And now it's got to copy everything, which also will take a little while. All right, so all that's copied. Now it asks if you want to create an ISO image. I'm going to do this as well, just so I have it. And it's done. So it'll go back to the main menu. But if we open up File Explorer here, you can see that uh, Drive K is named Win 10 Arm, and we've got all of our setup files and everything on that. So all we got to do now is safely eject the drive from our computer, plug it into the Surface, and get on with the setup process. All right, so here's the Surface. We've got a USB hub plugged in with the keyboard, and then I've got a mouse hooked up to the keyboard because it's an Apple one, and the USB drive because, uh, well, it's just easier to go through the setup process with a mouse and keyboard. So to boot off the USB drive, we have to press the power button, hold down the volume down button until the Surface logo comes up on the screen. So let me do that really quickly. And setup is starting. Check that out. I went ahead and wiped all the partitions, so there's nothing on this drive right now. So Windows 10 will be the sole operating system, which is exactly uh, what I want. So there we go. And you saw we did not have to run that Golden Keys jailbreak to boot into the Windows 10 setup here, which I suspect is because, you know, we're still using the Windows bootloader here, which is signed by Microsoft. So when it checks for that digital signature, it will find it and allow it to load just fine. So that's awesome. We're going to let it finish uh, copying its files. or Well, it already finished copying its files, but we'll let it do the rest of the stuff it's got to do here. Well, great news. Everything installed successfully. We're going to just choose our region here. Now, it did say it removed Cortana, but we still have this screen here. I'm just going to say no, because I don't, I mean, even if it did install it, I don't want it anyways, but it might just be that screen is still there, uh, but none of the files are. And we're going to get rid of all, turn all this stuff off. All right, so now it's doing some automated post-install stuff, like installing Office 2013 RT, but there are a few things that we'll have to do manually. All right, so we're done with all that, and you can see I've got the Surface set up in tablet mode, so to speak. I still have the keyboard and mouse plugged into it, though, because now we got to uh, move on to uh, applying some registry patches or some registry modifications to fix a couple of things. And this, by the way, is that text tutorial that I was following along with, and I'll have this link down below. But there are two known bugs, or there's actually more than two, but there's two bugs that are fixable by um, modifying the Windows registry. One of them has to do with user account control, which is just essentially broken in this build. The uh, interface does not display properly. So if you try to run an application that needs administrator privileges, you just won't be able to do it until you disable it. Now, this bottom section here is more specific to the Surface RT in that it fixes the uh, camera drivers, which is not able to recognize unless you add this key to the Windows registry. So we're just going to copy all of this and we'll just get notepad up here and we'll paste this in. We will save this as, let's just put it on the desktop or in documents, that's fine. We'll call it reg.reg and there we go. So now user account control should be disabled and we should be able to go into the camera app here and let's see if it's able to uh, recognize that. Yep, I see the light just came on and there it is. There's our front camera, isn't that awesome? So we could, uh, I mean, we could take a photo if we want to. 
Um, but there's no real, I mean, I'm not going to really use the cameras on this thing for anything. But uh, yeah, so I mean, you can see we've got the old uh, Project Spartan Microsoft Edge here, the, the pre-Chromium one. Uh, which I've not actually used in a long time. So uh, it's, you know, super out of date, of course. Uh, if we go to Google, it's probably going to load. It's going to go to MSN, of course. Get, I don't want MSN. Oh my gosh, that <laughs> it's like already, uh, it's it's already lagging a bit trying to load MSN here. But we go to Google and you can see it loads a, you know, older version of the page here. And I mean, we can do a search for Michael MJD. I guarantee you going to YouTube is not going to be very pleasant on here and yeah youtube.com is not responding yeah that's just to be expected you know with such an old version of microsoft edge but you know 2017 when this build was compiled that doesn't seem like it was that long ago but it was almost seven years ago i mean holy cow yeah i'm gonna try and not think about that too much but uh let's open up the microsoft store and see if we can download some apps. If you remember, we had trouble doing this in the previous video, or the you know original overview video I did on the Service RT because uh, the store in Windows 8.1 seemed to be shut down. But you see here, we've got a list of most popular applications. Uh, this, I mean, I've not seen this version of the store and like, I, I don't really remember. This layout just looks way different than what I'm used to. So we got Roblox. Is Roblox like the most popular app in the entire store or is that like is it sorting this by most popular i don't know but let's just see if we can get microsoft solitaire collection although i don't know why i'm getting this because this is such an awful like oh my gosh every time i see this it just like makes my heart hurt because the windows <laughs> windows solitaire used to be so good and then they just they just ruined it and of course we're gonna have to sign in with a microsoft account so let me log in with one of mine all right we've signed in and oh yeah i can touch the screen that's right <laughs> Um, I'm just I'm so used to using the keyboard and mouse. Oh, see available on below for devices. It won't run on this device. Oh yeah, look at that. So it needs Windows 10 version 17763.0 or higher, which we don't have. But even if it did support this version, it looks like it doesn't support ARM32. It supports ARM64 though. So, you know, there are going to be ARM apps in here, but I wonder if we can find anything on here that will actually work with both this build of Windows 10 and the ARM32 architecture. All right, so I've been browsing the store for a little while and I was able to find something, this top task list app, which for the description it says stop. This is a very early beta of top task list, uh, which is a great sign because if we scroll down here, it says that uh, it will work on Windows 8.1 or higher and neutral architecture is required, which um, probably means, you know, it's it's cross compatible with ARM and uh, x86. So let's see if we can download this. This is like the first app I've been scrolling through because there's there's no way to sort by like version number and what architecture that is required. There is a way to sort by what device that the app can run on, which if you select phone, you know, that's going to be ARM. But anyway, it just installed so we can click launch here. Let's see if this actually works, uh, which yeah, there it is. Most of the apps in here are just going to be too new to run on this version of Windows, but we can download apps from it if, if you're able to find one like we just did there. Uh, so that that's pretty awesome. And, you know, you can do all the other Windows 10 things that you normally do. We can go in here and open up, you know, Voice Recorder or there's our top task list program. Let's open up, I don't know, Groove Music. All these apps in here will work just fine, but you know, obviously you're not gonna be able to download any like Win32 applications because you know this is again an, an ARM-based device. So not gonna not gonna work out super well for you. But it's just cool to see uh Windows 10 running on this because like I said, it was never designed to to run Windows 10. And it's just neat that people have figured out how to do this. And honestly, as you saw, the process was not that difficult. So uh, if you have an old service RT lying around and want to mess around with it and have some some fun little project to do definitely be sure to uh, give this a try why not though as you've seen here it's not like you're going to get that much more usability out of this device however i suspect that if we put linux on this thing uh we'll be able to do some some pretty cool stuff and that is definitely something i want to explore in a future video and speaking of cool stuff do you know the amount of cool stuff you can do with the cloud computing services from today's video sponsor linode well the short answer is 
a lot. Linode is a company from Akamai that's been making cloud computing affordable, accessible, and simple for the past two decades. Their affordable Linux-based virtual machines provide you with the tools you need to host a wide variety of projects and applications. And with the backing of Akamai's worldwide network of data centers, you'll have the infrastructure to scale and deploy your project with enterprise-level capabilities like Kubernetes, load balancers, and object storage. Plus, their predictable no-lock-in pricing means that you can start small and upgrade to a higher tier in the future if your needs increase. And they'd love to have you try them out, so as a thank you for watching this video, if you sign up for a new account by clicking my link below, you'll receive a 60-day $100 credit to give them a test drive for completely free. So whatever your hosting needs might be, go ahead and check them out. And huge thanks again to Akamai's Linode for making this episode possible. That is going to wrap it up for this episode. I hope you all enjoyed this one. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up, get subscribed, all that good stuff and if you really like this video and want to get early access to my future content i do have a patreon down below that you can check out but either way i just want to thank you all so much for watching and i will see you in the next video